Hello again and welcome to the seventh part of this twelfth MOOC dedicated to the production of sustainable biofuels, namely biojet and biodiesel. In the sixth part, the bleaching section was discussed and the first steps of the hydro treatment unit were described. Let's now continue the description of the process. Remember, we raised the pressure of the liquid feed to 50 bars and we have injected the equivalent of 3.5 weight percent of ultra pure hydrogen. At this stage, we inject a liquid inert. We will detail the origin of this liquid a little bit later. Indeed, as we will see, the chemical reactions that will happen are extremely exothermic. And if we treat the feed as pure, its temperature will increase to an unacceptable value in the reactor. This is the reason why the feed is diluted with an inert liquid. The amount of inert injected is about 0.5 to 2 times the unit feed rate. In our case, we will consider 2 times the feed flow, or 200 tons per hour of liquid injected for 100 tons per hour of fresh feed rate. This inert is typically available at a temperature of about 40 to 200 degrees C. And in our case, we will consider that it is available at a temperature of 150 degrees C. Then we will inject a hydrogen-rich gas whose origin will be specified a little bit later. About 30 tons per hour of this gas is injected here. This hydrogen-rich gas purity is about 75 volume percent and is available at a temperature of about 70 degrees C and a pressure of 50 bars. We now have a mixture of 300 tons per hour of liquid, 100 tons per hour of fresh feed and 200 tons per hour of inert liquid, and 33 tons per hour of hydrogen-rich gas at a temperature of 115 degrees C and a pressure of 50 bars. This gas plus liquids mixture is then heated up in a set of heat exchangers to reach a temperature of around 250 degrees C. Let's now calculate together the amount of energy needed to heat this mixture from 115 degrees C to 250 degrees C. Well, we'll start by heating the liquid phase from 115 to 250 degrees C. Note that the average heat capacity of the liquid is 0.6 kcal per kilo and per degree C in this temperature range. When we do the calculation, we find an energy quantity of 300,000 multiplied by 0.6 multiplied by the temperature difference between 115 and 250 degree C, or about 25 gigacal per hour. The same exercise can be done with the 33.5 tons per hour of gas, with an average heat capacity of 1.25 kcal per kilo ampere degree C, I mean an energy quantity of 6 gigacal per hour. In the end, we find an energy quantity of 25 plus 6 equals 31 gigacal per hour. It should be noted that at this temperature level, the liquid remains in the liquid form, I mean no oil vaporization. Then, we enter a furnace that can raise the temperature to reach the reaction temperature. But in these conditions, we will see that because of chemical reactions, we do not need to turn on this furnace. So, we will enter the reactor at 250 degrees C and the pressure of about 45 bars. At this pressure and temperature, the metals will be trapped on the first catalyst layers whose purpose is to protect the downstream hydrotreating catalyst. Well, that's it for today. See you very soon for the next part. Do not forget the quiz. The link is available in the description of the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you very soon. Bye bye.